Out of the barracks you guys go. Lowry's on the left side of the body, Elvis controls the right side, and Paul, you control the head. It's the talky part. So we basically turned this guy into a Power Rangers battle armor. Don't be dumb, Paul. He's small and not made of animals. I don't know if that's actually true, Lowry. All the cells that make up a human body might be considered animals, but I don't remember if that's accurate. Alright, fine, Elvis. He's not made of rad animals that kids would buy toys of. We could still have a theme song, though. If you want a theme song, you're in charge of that, Paul. Uh, go Phantasm Rangers. Do, 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 do. Anyway, your possessed squad makes its way to cell block K where all your bodies are at. Along the way, you get into the occasional small skirmish with the other inmates. It's fairly benign until out of nowhere, a wall caves in and a massive shark man steps through the wreckage. It's Snack Attack Mac, and he's got a big old shark grin. His shirt is covered in ketchup and mustard stains, but it doesn't look like it slowed him down much. Mac, his strength alone is one thing, but more to fear is his agility. This beast can outrun a speeding car over short distances and throw a rock with enough force to kill a full-grown elk. There'll be no fleeing from a battle chosen by this monster. Sounds like you've done your homework, Mac says, taking a step over the scattered masonry. Are you the guy in charge? No, that would be him. Point to some random guy. Fire at will, men! They start shooting at Mac, but basically they're just splattering him in fresh ketchup. He scoops up a stone and hurls it at a guy. It hits him with a crunch and the rock bursts into powder. Then someone throws a mustard grenade. You hear the lumbering thump, thump, thump of Mac charging up to someone in the fog and then a sound like celery cracking. Run! Oh, wait, uh, yeah, Elvis, Lowry! I'm already running. Yeah, it's not our body, but we need to get at least one guard out of here. Paul, before you can even give the command, your feet are moving and you flee the scene, following the ancient rule that if you can't outrun a bear, you can at least outrun the guys behind you. We're never going to make it by ourselves, Paul. we got to figure something out. You're right. As soon as we're far enough away, the next time we stumble across anyone, take them down, steal their clothes, and we'll proceed incognito. We'll be inmates in the body of a guard disguised as inmates. Like some kind of unholy turducken cordon bleu. An apt comparison, Elvis. As chefs, we can truly do wonders by stuffing things inside of other things. You stumble across a guy. He stops in his tracks, leaning over awkwardly as he just about falls off balance. Shoot him. And just like that, a new uniform is acquired. You continue on to cell block K. Most of the other inmates barely give you a second glance. In no time, you're standing over your own bodies. Creepy. All right, now what do we do? Well, I suggest we hand this guard's gun off to one of us. That'll make two in total in our possession. After that, we ought to tie his pants around his ankles, blindfold him, then set off a mustard grenade in the cell. You guys cooperate to cripple this guard when he wakes up, then pull the pin off the mustard grenade and drop it. Boom! It goes off and everyone lurches awake, including Pepperoni, Paul's line chef. Sergeant Maraschino starts to take off his blindfold. What's going on? Where am I? Bash him with the butt of the rifle. And he's down. Are you back in the world of the living, Pepperoni? Pepperoni pats himself down. I honestly can't say. I started running, and then the more I ran, the more I got lost. Eventually it got dark, and all I could hear was the roaring sound of an oven. All around me were the eyes of people who fell victim to the recipe, asking me why. Why? I put my hand on Pepperoni's knee. They never understood us or our genius. Pimienta's work is simply mind games clear he's jealous of our prowess and is seeking not to be upstaged on the eve of our escape. Of course. Yes, of course. Pimienta probably controlled the whole thing. He's a master of spicy food, and it's no secret that a spicy dish before bed can cause nightmares. It's a theory I used to consider in my youth before I wisened up and focused on more important things. I helped Pepperoni to his feet. Well, that was a lot of work just to get one guy, Paul. We need five more of these MacGuffins? They aren't MacGuffins. They're skilled kitchen staff, and yes, they're necessary to create the Gaia pizza. Our next target is Cell Block J. Hi, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Pepperoni. I'm Lowry, one of Paul's neighbors. You know, in the cells, I, I do a good bean dish. Pepperoni shakes your hand. Before we go, did Sergeant Maraschino have any more mustard grenades on him? Yeah, he had two grenades. Take them both. Just a moment, don't you think we should discuss who holds those? Preferably someone with the strongest throwing arm. Ah, heck, that rules me out. I always got picked last for baseball. Look, you guys just keep the guns. I got a plan for these. Well, if you say so. Let's get moving. You rush down the halls and towards the stairwell that leads to the catwalk to cell block K. But sitting in front of the stairs is none other than Pimienta Phantasma himself. He looks up slowly. Well, Paul, 
I already got through purgatory. Seems a little short for someone like you. A god rarely pays for his sins, Pimienta. <laughs> Is that what you think? Pimienta pulls out a knife. He fishes a bunch of acorns out of his other pocket. I guess when you go down this time, I'll have to cut your hamstrings. You can still make your pizza that way, can't you? Assuming we even want you to. Hang on, Paul. I've got this. I step forward. Don't speak nonsense, Elva. Pimienta isn't one to be underestimated, let alone fought by yourself. Oh, he's nothing but just a little bit of Halloween theming. It's all a gimmick. Mason, I take out the mustard grenade, pull out the pin, then hold the trigger. What, going to throw a mustard grenade? I already thought of that. The acorn shells protect my spices from being ruined. Well, lucky it's not for you. See, you hit me with that stuff and I'll pass out. But if I pass out, I'll drop the grenade. The mustard hits me and I wake right back up. That's fairly clever. What's your name? Elva? Ah, he's right. That I would have just thrown the grenade. My name is Elva, but I don't see a lot of point in introducing myself to a dead man. Big talk for someone who only has two of those grenades. I've got an entire handful of acorns. Sonny, I might not even need this one. I break my molar. Your molar shatters, releasing a hidden store of Elva's secret ingredient. In an instant, Elva's muscle mass doubles in size, from a wiry old woman to a sexy CrossFit trainer. <laughs> okay. Rush this guy! Elva tears down the hallway with the speed of an Olympic athlete, slamming shoulder first into Pimienta's nose. The man stumbles backwards, holding his bleeding schnoz as he regains his balance. How you like that, huh? Kick the knife out of his hand. Pimienta reflexively jumps away, falling towards the stairs, but instead of landing on them, he passes right through them like a specter. You hear a thump on the floor down below, and if you peer around the stairs, you see him on the floor. He's getting up, slowly. Ugh. Leap down on top of him. You jump down, landing on his chest. You hear the ribs break and Pimienta spits up blood. <coughs> I can't believe I'm being done in by, by <laughs> an old woman. Oh, well, you know what they say, Pimienta. If recklessness doesn't do you in, old age will get you. Wait, wait. You and me, we don't have any reason to fight. You just got caught up in Paul's collateral, right? I just glare at him. No, okay. Listen, listen. I, I am a useful man. I can help you. I'll, I'll work with Paul and you both. I will. That's all I needed to hear, Pimienta. I... Thank goodness, I... Uh... Because it lets me know that Crouton doesn't have things sewn up as well as it seems. And you can risk looking like you switch sides for even just a little while. But I don't need cooks in my kitchen who can't commit to their jobs. I give this guy's head a coup de gras axe kick. With a swift, dramatic kick, you take Pimienta out of action. Sending him on a permanent spirit journey he'll likely never return from. Good heavens. You really didn't need the grenade after all. Did anyone see where I left the pin? I guess we look around for it. You find it and put it back in the grenade. I must say, I was beginning to worry that some of your bluster might be mere pig-headedness. How long do you stay at this elevated physical ability? What do you mean? I'll stay like this for good. It's how I look in all my TV appearances. Unreasonable. If that was so, you wouldn't have arrived here looking as you did. All right, it only lasts a few minutes. Right now. But I was in the process of a longer-lasting formula. All this is a proof of concept, you understand? I understand entirely too well. You guys carry on up the stairs and cross the catwalk to cell block J, but come to a stop when you notice a pink gummy material at the edges of the door. Well, I guess no way to go but forward, right? Swing the doors open. You swing the doors open, and at first, you think you've fallen back into the shadow realm. The walls are covered in a pink asymmetrical substance, but then the smell hits you and you realize it's candy. It's taffy. The entire hall on down is covered in the stuff. Lafferty. I guess the rumors were true. Lafferty is the guy made out of candy, isn't he? Yes, it's rumored that he could excrete glucose, but this, this exceeds even my expectations. Is he one of Crouton's goons? I'm afraid he is. And unless you know how to take advantage of candy, we may find our opponent has the home turf advantage. Well, I never touch this stuff. Candy's bad for you. How many times can you tap into your so-described inner health? Ah, most of these teeth are falsies. Back in the day, I realized it'd be inconvenient to get caught looking my age, so I had my teeth replaced with these hollow capsules. Now I can be a fitness guru anytime for at least a little while, until I run out of teeth. Oh, in that case, thanks for not beating me up when I was trying to kill you guys. I would have if I had to. The past is the past. Fortunate circumstances are no. Two of my line chefs are here in cell block J. We have no case but to carry on. When you step into the hall, you can feel the taffy sticking to your boots. 
Walking is manageable, but a lot of effort. Eventually, the taffy starts coming in different colors. The ground is like lime green grass and tufted in some places. There's a little taffy bunny sitting in it. Then you spot one of the cells. It's got a plaque hanging from it. The plaque is brown like wood and has a picture of an anvil drawn on it. When you look inside, it seems the cell has been redesigned with taffy furniture to look like a blacksmith's. There's a taffy anvil behind an inmate who's wearing a taffy smith's apron over his prison garb. When he sees you, he says... Oh, uh, uh, yaw, uh, yawn adventurer, travelers, co uh, come to my, ye, uh, this is the smith. I verily make swords and horseshoes and the like. Does, does Doth need any of mine services? Yeah, heck, I'll take a horseshoe. Four soothes. Here you go, my good man. Lowry, he pulls a horseshoe out from under his counter and hands it to you. It's made of taffy, right? I start eating it. That'll be a scant five Tafferty dollars, sirs. Ah, uh, nah, nah. This is a robbery. I stole this horseshoe. Oh, uh, I, I don't know what to do about that. Cry about it, dork. Sir, what on earth is going on here? Look, man, Tafferty took over and he is crazy. He's saying that this is the kingdom of Cell Block J and that he's one of Caesar's knights. He's been going around turning everything into some kind of taffy wonderland. And if he catches you acting out of character, he absorbs you into the taffy and you're never heard from again. The door's just down the hall to your left. Why don't you make a run for it, Smithy? The thin frame of Lafferty jauntily bursts up from behind the counter. He's wearing a suit of armor made of taffy and carrying a taffy sword on his hip. He springs up and down like an accordion, turns with a manic smile towards the smith, and then the smith starts rapidly sinking into the taffy. Oh god! Ah! I'm sorry! Ah! ah! And then he's gone. Well, if it isn't Paul, Tafferty announces, and his merry band of men. A fine morn to all of you. But alas, I fear I'm restricted from showing you the most proper hospitality, because as I'm sure you're aware, you've angered King Caesar. I merely wish to carry out precisely what Caesar hired me for, Tafferty. What have you done with my line, chefs? You're trying to do what he wanted you to do. And if I'm not mistaken, that's not the same as what he currently wants you to do. If I may further recall, the good knight Pimienta was tasked with keeping you in cell block K. There yonder. But it seems that no heat, ghastly or otherwise, could contain such a cool man as yourself, Paul. Excuse me, it was actually me who killed Pimienta? Oh. Oh, then my apologies, fair madam. I did the disservice of misjudging you. Just plain sexism is what it is. Or ageism. Or sanityism. People are always coming to conclusions about my sanity. Well, trust me, I know that feeling. We all do here. But regardless of who did the deed, the real fact remains that as the saying goes, you catch more flies than sweetness than with vinegar. And I've never heard of anyone catching flies with ghost peppers. Oh. Where are my line chefs, Tafferty? Goodness, goodness. You're so about the objective, Paul. Don't you know that good business means making friends? But fine, I will elucidate. You see, you and your friends have violated the laws laid out by King Caesar, and as one of his loyal vassals, I have no choice but to extract justice. But of course, I'm a modern thinking man, and I believe in a fair trial. So, if you want to see your line chefs, you'll have to explore the entirety of Kingdom J, uncover the secret entrance to my castle, and then defend yourselves before a jury of your peers. And you really expect me to believe that at the end of such nonsensical games, I'll be given a fair trial, and that you're operating on some sort of rules? I don't ask you to. I tell you to. Try to cheat or escape, and I'll kill your line chef's lickety split. It's my fight, them. I make the rules. Lafferty springs below the counter. A sign swings over that says, out to lunch, and then he's gone. Wonderful. Looks like we've got no choice but to entertain a grown child until we can think of a way through this. I'll be honest, I kind of like Taffety. You know, uh, also his taffy is really good. Like, I know this is a horseshoe, but this is the tastiest horseshoe that I've ever eaten. How's all this work, Pa? Is he watching us right now? Can he hear us through the taffy? I've never really seen him in action. Lafferty has been surrounded by rumors for as long as he's been here. He's worked for Caesar for quite some time and has always had a rather eccentric bent to his personality... But apparently he knew better than to manifest all this where Guy Inferno would see it. How wouldn't Guy Inferno know? This is a lot! Inferno is not omniscient. Sometimes he catches a chef before the chef does the unthinkable. Sometimes he catches them afterward. 
As far as I know of Tafferty, he's fond of games, but rarely likes to be the man directly in charge. He prefers to play the role of a problem solver, and when Inferno grabbed him, he was in the process of intentionally making candy-related problems that only he could solve. I heard something once about a taffy gorilla attacking the local mayor, and several other outlander stories. Now I have no idea which could be true and which must be fabricated. That bunny we saw back there wasn't alive. It was just decoration. Yes, and if Tafferty needs other inmates to serve the roles of his peasantry, it's perhaps unlikely that he can make independent Taffy life. Unless he thinks it's more fun to just make people play the parts. I suppose we should express all due caution. So what do you guys do? I guess carry on for now. Let's go see the village. You see a variety of other shops where the cells should be. People try to sell you taffy fruits, taffy baskets, taffy cookware. None of them seem terribly enthused about the whole thing. A few are trying to do fake English accents. Eventually, you're overlooking the cafeteria of the cell block, located in the center of the structure, and down below are a bunch of little huts. You see the heads of several guards stuck on taffy sticks. Up above you, there's a candy castle suspended upside down. You don't see any way in. Oh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. No dice. If she's up there, her hair probably's got taffy in it. Well, it was worth a shot. So we have to get up there, huh? Could you climb or jump it? You know, guys, we're thinking about getting up there, but I also don't see any way down. Yes, Lowry, it's funny how these things work out, isn't it? I mean, I don't think that castle's up there just to keep people out, right? I don't know about where you guys are from, but where I'm from, usually you go to trial knowing the charges. If you can't afford a lawyer, the state would provide one to you to lose the case on your behalf. I don't want to be doing taffy paperwork or filing an amicus brief or whatever. I don't even know what those are. Lowry, an amicus brief is when a third party to a court case offers the court suggestions or insights into the trial so that the judge has a better idea of what he's judging and what's at stake. See, yeah, I don't know exactly what's at stake. I would make a terrible amicus. Well, apparently we're not on trial until we get up there. This is infuriating. We have two grenades which would neutralize some of this taffy. Two guns, perhaps one and a half magazines of ketchup... Which, by the way, hold this. Hand my gun to Pepperoni. Oh, thanks, boss. I trust you with it. A whole team of guards already got wiped out. Look at him. Those heads don't look like Taffy to me. Well, who's responsible, Lafferty? Excuse me. Mason, I try to get the attention of another inmate. Yeah, me. An inmate comes up to you. Can you tell me how these guards were slain? Oh, them? We mostly overwhelmed them, but to be honest, Lafferty did a lot of the work. He just kept making Taffy and the guards got pinned down. When they ran out of ammo, he just came down on them. Man, uh, 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 sure was a sight, good sirs. We folks are surely lucky to have such a brave knight lording over the realm. I guess that rules our meager supplies out of the equation, at least in a direct method. Actually, Paul, you know what? Just get us up there. I think I got a plan. Care to share with us? I can't. The wall's got ears, man. You just have to trust me. Fine. We've little else to do, but proceed as instructed. I have nothing in mind. I don't suppose you'll mind if I try to come up with my own plan, will you? Ah, uh, come on, Elva, don't you trust me? As far as I understand, you're just the weird-smelling guy who stands next to Paul and makes dumb observations. Ha, <laughs> ha, uh, uh, okay, all right, yeah. But also, I got, like, interest in stuff, you know, favorite colors. I'm human, too, Elva. You know, maybe I'm afraid to develop deep personal connections, so I rely on superficial nonsense to make friends. See, that's a personality flaw, that's depth. Actually, I don't know if that's true, I'm just kind of making it up. Now that sounds, sounds, sounds spot on to me. Well, we're really just being reductive about my personality. I don't know if I want to help now. Larry, this is no time to be petty for the sake of pride. I know your skill with beans and the creative genius required to do as you've done. If you have a plan, I trust it was hatched from the same brood as the one which drowned your home city. That's... that's not really the vote of confidence that you think it is, Paul. Elva, have you stopped to consider what a logistical nightmare it is to drown a city in beans? The amount of preparation... Few people could possibly do the math, and yet Lowry here did it entirely. Just from the kindness of his own hearts, it wasn't even profitable to him. Yeah, I destroyed my city because I cared. And I care about getting us out of the flavor zone. Look, Elva, you're part of the plan. I don't need you to know much, but I need you to know I'm dependent on you, okay? All right, fine. But if I have to eat any beans, I'm, I'm going to throw a fit. Ah, yeah, I'd never tried one of my beans. It's worth breaking your diet for at least once. Mason turned to the inmate. Excuse me, good sir. I don't suppose you're aware of how we'd reach the castle in yonder sky. Uh, if ye wish to enter the castle, then you should converse with the village elder. He lives in yon big house down there. He points to a slightly larger home. It's pretty much the same as the other candy cottages, with the taffy thatch roofing and everything. But it's parked up against the corner of the cafeteria, and it does look a little bigger. Thank you, villager. 
We'll proceed on our own from here. I guess we head down. You work your way around the staircase and head to the bottom of the courtyard, which is illuminated by artificial floodlighting thanks to the castle blocking the sky. The light reflects sharply off the taffy, making it look plastic. Knock on the village elder's door. An old man answers the door. Looks like he's wearing nothing but taffy, made to look like a tunic. Uh, Yes? Hello? Uh, What is it now? Why aren't you dressed properly, you idiots? Are you trying to get yourself accused of witchcraft? I am afraid that as a band of adventurers, we're prone to dressing in all manner of ridiculous insincerity. Just be thankful we all have pants on. In our case, our individualistic costumes just happen to look like prison uniforms. Oh, wait. You guys are the adventurers? Our liege told us to wait for adventurers. Uh, Yeah, I got a task for you. You see, our kitchen has been plagued by a terrible rat problem. We need you to eliminate the rats. And as a reward, I'll give you ten Lafferty dollars per rat that you kill. Uh, What is this nonsense? We're not seeking Lafferty dollars. We're seeking the man himself. Well, maybe do us enough good deeds, and then I can recommend you. Turn to the town. What a pathetic lot you are. Look around. Each of you, the pinnacle of what your civilizations have to offer. And now you find yourselves brought low by a candy facade. Are you not feared most above all men in all known universes? Is your ring not the dinner bell of fate? Look around you at this artificial coloring. Where have your spines gone? One of the villagers in the cafeteria gets up on a table. Hey, that guy's right. I own the highest rated restaurant on my entire planet. Now I'm supposed to sell candy mead for funny money? We should be running this prison. We- ah! The taffy yanks that guy's legs out from underneath him and pulls him down into the candy. Is it possible to see where he goes? If you're watching carefully, it looks like he gets rapidly dragged through the ground, then up the walls towards the castle. Now that poor man. At least he died standing up for himself, unlike you, Mr. Village Elder. Look, there's two ways to get up there. Either do what Lafferty wants, or do the opposite. I honestly can't tell you which way is going to turn out better for you, but as my lord, I know I'm obligated to follow Lafferty's wishes. Lafferty can't rule a township with no one in it. To some extent, you perpetuate your own slavery. Hey, Paul, uh, just leave the guy alone. Let's go kill the rats, whatever. Uh, But before we do, can we drop by the bathroom? I gotta get something. Uh, I hate to see what kind of condition the bathrooms are in. It's lucky I don't have to poop anymore. Like, because you you already did, or because you never have to? That sounds like a medical condition, Elva. Nope, nope, nope. I'm just too healthy to poop. I never poop. Fascinating. Let's make our stop at the bathroom, then entertain these inane wishes. The elder sneers at you as you leave. The cell blocks are laid out mostly the same, so you find the bathroom without any problems. Looks like it's been dressed up to look like outhouses, but only just barely. Lafferty left all the running water and plumbing alone, and it looks like the taffy doesn't actually go into the stalls. Here we are. Looks mercifully not like a sticky situation. That's not a big deal. I actually just needed a toilet seat. Toilet seat? What the heck for? The walls have ears, Elvis. Uh, Let's go ahead, pry it off. You work together and get a toilet seat unattached from a toilet. Raise it above my head. Da-na-na-na. Toilet seat acquired. What on earth are you doing, Lowry? Well, I mean, I'm staying in character. When you get an item in these kinds of fantasy games, you gotta lift it above your head so everyone can see it. Uh, I guess so Lafferty can see it in this case. I mean, it's more exciting than just having text say what it is. You've been here all of 30 minutes and you've already gone as bonkers as Lafferty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see who's crazy soon. Come on, we just gotta get those rats. With your newly found item of power, the group departs towards adventure.